Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Warriors in Shadowlands. If you've been keeping up with PvP or streaming on the beta, you've likely seen Warriors looking much stronger than they were in BFA. For this video, we consulted with Magnus, one of the highest rated Warriors in the world, in order to take a look at why Warriors are looking so much better while also covering all the basics to help you get started with your own Warriors the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll also be releasing a refresher guide when Season 1 starts that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment those guides are out. To get things started, let's take a look at what's changed for Warriors going from BFA into Shadowlands. While the design of the class itself hasn't changed too much, the addition of a few new abilities have brought Warriors more in line with the strongest melee classes. Both the return of Shield Block and the addition of Ignore Pain have been a much needed improvement to a Warrior's defensive toolkit, assisting their personal survival, which was certainly lacking throughout BFA, given that Arms Warriors were the only melee without a consistent self-heal. Another great change that Warriors have seen is to how Deep Wounds works. Previously, Warriors mostly relied on the consistent damage provided from Deep Wounds, with the majority of a Warrior's damage breakdown coming from Bleeds. Now, in Shadowlands, a warrior's damage is much more front-loaded as Deep Wounds has been reworked to increase the damage enemies take from you, returning warriors to their former glory as a melee you don't want to leave freely attacking someone. Beyond those changes, the return of Intervene and the addition of the legendary Misshapen Mirror gives warriors incredible team utility, while a handful of other legendaries can make their damage even more threatening. So, given that warriors hit harder now, what does their playstyle look like? Well, despite a warrior's damage being a lot more front-loaded, the strength of their utility exceeds the rework to their damage. A warrior's ability to enable their teammates with a team-wide spell reflection and intervene while tanking damage with shield block and ignore pain gives warriors much more of a support role. In the words of Magnus, consider yourself more of a team mom, so to speak. Alright, so how do warriors rank up against other melee? Warriors essentially have an answer for every situation they find themselves in as they're able to effectively peel both melee and casters. And given that it's extremely hard to actually deal with a well-played Warriors toolkit, it's safe to say the support that they provide is unmatched and cements them as one of the best melee in the game. The good news is that while we're ranking Warriors up there with the best melee in the game, because of the level of play required to make Warriors support their team effectively, and because their burst isn't out of control, we fully expect Warriors to remain at this level without seeing too many incoming buffs or nerfs. The only potential nerfs that we may see happen will likely be to their misshapen mirror legendary, as it can be considered quite overpowered. Although it does of course take up your legendary slot, so it's entirely possible that we won't see this changed at all. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Alright, next up we're going to take a look at everything you need to get started with your own warriors, starting with the best races. If you're playing Alliance, Human is your best option. The change to PvP trinkets no longer being an honor talent and instead being an item that you have to equip means that humans are the only race that can equip two offensive trinkets while still being able to break out of stuns. That option coupled with the human spirit, which gives them additional secondary stats, makes humans the best alliance race. Still though, gnomes are defensively a viable pick if you want a better matchup into mages and any other comps that have a ton of slows and or roots. Horde players, on the other hand, still only have one competitive option, orcs. The stun reduction from hardiness coupled with the extra damage from Blood Fury makes orcs hands down the only viable race for warriors playing on Horde. Okay, you've chosen your best race, now let's look at your best talents. Starting in the level 15 row, Sudden Death remains as your go-to talent given that Execute is currently your hardest hitting ability. It's worth noting that Sudden Death Execute procs don't interact with Anger Management which is why Dreadnought's value was increased, which we'll touch on later. Next up, in the level 25 row, Stormbolt is a must, as it's the only stun warriors have access to. Although Devil Time remains a niche pick in matchups where you need as much mobility as possible to stick to a mobile target, this will not happen often, and you'll likely take Stormbolt to 99% of your games. The level 30 row sees our first change from BFA, with Massacre now being your best talent. This change is a result of Rage Generation remaining the same in Shadowlands as it was in BFA, but with lower levels of haste and the introduction of both Ignore Pain and Shield Block, 
which gives you more ways to spend rage. Warriors end up not having enough rage to keep up with rend. Pair the rage issues with the fact that execute damage is extremely high, which makes teams struggle to recover if they drop below 35% and you end with Massacre easily being the best choice. However, you can still consider picking up Rend against double plate melee DPS teams if there are no pets. Just be sure to only apply it with sweeping strikes due to the high rage cost. Moving down into the level 35 row, defensive stance still remains your best choice despite reducing your damage by 20% in PvP. The ability to reduce the damage that you take by 20% whenever your healer is CC'd or simply when you're under pressure is too valuable to pass up. The level 40 row has another easy pick with Warbreaker playing a huge part in your ability to consistently apply spread pressure to enemy teams whenever they stack. Without this talent, you'd have to rely on sweeping strikes to spread Colossus Smash to the right target, so specking into Warbreaker takes away the RNG and makes this a reliable cooldown. The next row sees a return to Avatar as the talent of choice. Recently, we saw a number of abilities removed from the GCD, and that included Avatar. That change, along with the 20 rage and 20% damage increase you get when using Avatar once again, makes this the best choice in this tier. In for the kill still remains a close second, but the shift to using Dreadnought makes Avatar a better choice as it allows you to better control your burst windows. The final tier is something we've already mentioned twice, and that's Dreadnought. Throughout BFA, Anchor Management was the best choice, but a recent rework to Dreadnought has seen it grant two stacks of overpower instead of one. This gives it great synergy with Avatar as you're able to quickly stack your overpower buff twice to create burst windows with Avatar while also getting the added benefit of some minor cleave damage from the built-in seismic wave. With that being said, you can still consider picking up Anger Management when you have 100% uptime against low armor targets with poor mobility like Shadow Priest and Destro Warlocks. Next, let's go over your PvP talents. Your standard build should consist of Sharpened Blade, Master and Commander, and Storm of Destruction. Sharpen Blade is a very strong cooldown that can be used to simply increase the damage of your mortal strike during your burst or as a way to extend a CC chain by reducing the healing on your target. Master and Commander continues to hold its place as one of your strongest PvP talents. It reduces the cooldown of Rallying Cry to one minute while also increasing the health it provides, making it a very reliable cooldown for keeping your team alive during enemy kill attempts. And Storm of Destruction is a great default pick that works into most comps. By reducing the CD of Blade Storm, you're able to improve your mobility while also gaining access to a decently hard hitting ability more often. Although it's worth stating that you'll be frequently swapping out of Storm of Destruction. But what will you be swapping it to? Well, all three of Disarm, War Banner, and Overwatch are incredibly strong talents that have a ton of value in many matchups. Disarm is a clear pick when facing any team with a melee if you want the added defense. Overwatch provides you with some additional outplay potential to keep your team out of CC with Intervene, and War Banner is a great tool into setup-based comps to help counter some of their goes. Alright, you've now hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best Covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Curian as the best Covenant for Warriors. The passive 5% burst increase along with the utility that you gain is unmatched. The Curian Warrior ability, Spear of Bastion, is also an extremely strong tool that allows you to essentially lock people in place for 4 seconds. In addition, the self-healing that you gain from Vial of Serenity, along with the pseudo-dwarf racial effect that removes all curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects, makes the Kyrian Covenant fill in the gap that's missing from a Warrior's Toolkit. After choosing the Kyrian as your Covenant, you'll then get to have one of the three Soulbinds active each of which comes with a selection of Soulbind abilities. We recommend going with Pelagos as your Soulbind, as the previously mentioned versatility buff comes from Let Go of the Past, a super strong Soulbind ability. You also get Combat Meditation, a 5% mastery buff that lasts for 20 seconds whenever you use Spear Bastion, which can be extended by walking over the sorrowful memories that you spawn. Each Soulbind also gives you access to a combination of four conduits, categorized as Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. Our recommended path through Pelagos sees you pick up two Potency Conduits, one Endurance, and one Finesse. For Potency, Crash the Ramparts and Mortal Combo are your two best picks. Mortal Combo is a passive damage increase, giving your Mortal Strike a chance to trigger twice. 
and Crash the Ramparts gives your Overpower a chance to apply Colossus Mash, which gives you more opportunities to deal significant damage. As for your one Endurance Conduit, Stalwart Guardian is a really strong pick as it reduces the CD of your only major defensive cooldown, Die by the Sword. If you were to use two Endurance Conduits, we'd recommend using Brutal Vitality as your second one to make your Ignore Pain a little stronger. And finally, you should be taking Safeguard as your only Finesse Conduit, as it gives you yet another tool for supporting your team by giving a teammate DR when you intervene them. Another Finesse Conduit that you could consider using is Inspiring Presence, which has great synergy with the Master and Commander PvP talent, but shouldn't really replace Safeguard unless you expect to be targeted in Arena from start to finish and won't get value out of Safeguard. Alright, that brings us to our final section on which Legendary you should craft for PvP. As we already mentioned earlier, Misshapen Mirror plays a small role in why Warriors are so strong right now, as it allows them to enable their team against casters with a well-timed team-wide spell reflect capable of assisting their team in avoiding damage, CC, or even landing crowd control of their own. However, there are a handful of other legendaries warriors may want to consider crafting for an alternative playstyle or just to better handle different types of matchups. Enduring Blows is your best single target damage legendary and complements the Crash the Ramparts potency conduit quite well. This gives warriors a third way to apply Colossus Smash to create more windows where they deal significantly more damage. Unhinged is another good option but only when facing melee cleaves that don't have much CC for you to reflect. It makes your blade storm more potent by automatically triggering Mortal Strike twice while channeling it, making it a stronger offensive cooldown in these matchups. And the last legendary to consider is Cephas's Proclamation, which provides you with a weaker version of the Relentless Trinket and gives you a stat boost whenever you land an interrupt or use CC every 30 seconds. While it may not give you as much damage as the other legendaries, it still has its place against melee cleaves that have a lot of short duration stuns that you can benefit from reducing the length of. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Warriors in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to get started in Season 1, and be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include updates to the information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.